My name is Sarah Erickson. I'm a librarian here at Chicago Public Library in the Municipal Reference Collection. Um, I've been here for over 10 years and um, I really enjoy the, the uh, working with the challenging collection and the interesting and historic documents. Um, the Municipal Reference Collection began as the Municipal Reference Library about a hundred years ago and uh, they kind of stemmed out of this progressive era where they wanted to have something like municipal science where they would create this special library that the people governing Chicago could use to answer questions like how has you know other cities how have other cities addressed such and such problem either through legislation or whatever um, as well as keeping track of statistics about the city, so um, uh, what, how many traffic lights there are or how many um, business establishments are in each ward. And um, the, they also, in this municipal reference library, they tracked some of the city history. And so they went back and they looked at, you know, ward boundaries, um, they kept track of the mayors uh, and little biographies about the mayors as well as other elected officials. And um, they were in City Hall on the 10th floor of City Hall for many years and then um, they've now moved to the Harold Washington Library where the collection um, can be accessed. I'm Lyle Benedict. I'm a librarian at the Municipal Reference Library. I've been working our Municipal Reference Collection. I've been working there actually since, um, well, it's 31 years now. Um, I originally went there because I love detective work and um, it was the most intensive collection around at that point. You went in there and there were six people who could all reach over and grab each other's phones and answer questions. And now, I love that. I still do. So, um, the, so that's who I am. As, as for what the collection is, um, we collect published documents of the city and approximately seven other overlapping bodies governing bodies. At, in the past, there had been 40 or 50 overlapping governing bodies, something like 39 park districts alone. Right. Um, we collect those. Our definition of published is not what most people would consider published. If somebody types up a piece of paper and uh, distributes five copies on his desk for anybody to come and pick up, that's what we'd consider published. So. We didn't bring a lot of examples, but a mm -hmm. lot of our documents are very thin and not overly document looking. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what we collect. We also collect what we like to call public policy papers, but there's a lot of other agencies such as Friends of the Park, Metropolitan Planning Council that issue documents about the city government. Um, it's also significant probably for government documents librarians that Chicago issues probably around 2,000 documents a year, which is probably more than all except for about 10 governments in the United States, including slightly more than the state of Illinois, for example, um, less than probably Texas or California. But um, So that's the scope and what we collect. So Frederick Rex was the municipal um, reference librarian, and he um, came in 1904. 1904, yeah. And retired in 1956. Yeah, yeah. And he really was the um, uh, force behind many of the, the both the, the publications that came out of municipal reference library. Um, as well as other civic um, uh, 
uh, offices. Like he was a market inspector. Was that it? Market? Yeah, market Maxwell Street. He inspected the vegetables and stuff at Maxwell Street Market. They were, they were huge on statistics. They actually, the first name was the Bureau of Statistics. And they took over from an earlier statistical unit in the Bureau of Health. Um, and they served pretty much everybody. Another progressive element was you actually told the public what was going on in the government. So um, that's always been a core function. Yeah. One of the uses that I think um, perhaps used to, uh, happened in the past and not as much anymore was because of the, the change in location. So they used to be in City Hall and um, they were a go-to for people who worked in City Hall. So whether that was aldermen, people who worked in the alderman's office, um, other uh, city planners, et cetera. And um, now that we are here at Harold Washington, which is kind of quite a distance um, from City Hall, we see less of you know aldermen and aldermen staff um, uh, popping in just to, to get a, you know a quick answer to you know something about their ward or, or something like that. Another user that has sort of been lost was at Municipal Reference Library in City Hall, we had a lot of newspaper reporters. Mm -hmm. We maintained a clipping file, um, and it looks like this. Mm -hmm. it, actually, it actually has little individual newspaper clips. Um, it started roughly in 1956, um, and we stopped doing it in 2011. Um, but in City Hall, the newspaper reporters had their own press room downstairs where they could congregate. They um, would come up, they'd read articles, often their competitors' articles, they had their own morgues, but if you worked for the Tribune, you didn't have a morgue of the Sun-Times. We also equipped about 40 neighborhood papers. Um, and so a lot of times, you know, we'd be handing out these clipping files to the newspaper reporters. Then they would be rewriting the contents of it the next day. So, and we would be clipping it again. So it was a very interactive process. Yeah. One of the, the other interesting things about the clipping file is that um, they subscribe to multiple editions of the paper. So when um, these major newspapers were digitized, that's only one edition. So if something came out um, in a morning edition, uh, you can find it, say, in the clipping file, and that might not also be in the digitized edition that you can um, get through through the vendors um, like ProQuest or, um, yeah. The, the neighborhood papers are, were very important too because um, number one, if you have an automatic race, the Tribune and the Sun-Times aren't going to cover more than about 10 or 15 aldermen, whereas the neighborhood papers will get them all. We just had a question yesterday. Somebody wanted a picture of the pile of dirt that accumulated in Operation Silver Shovel. And I don't think they clip files here, but um, we went through 40 or 50 pa clips from mm -hmm. the Tribune and the Sun-Times, and it happened that the North Lawndale News actually had a picture of the um, pile of dirt from Operation Silver Shovel. <laughs>
And again, that's something we continued up until the time we came here. Um, the some of it in a computerized era is much easier. For example, pre-computer we collected municipal codes from uh, 10 or 12 other cities, which turned out to be extremely difficult. Even a major city like San Francisco, maybe the city court publishes their code in the basement whenever they feel like it. Um, and in the computerized era, that's all easy. You just go online and you can find a municipal code from anywhere in the country. Um, and in general, the tendency, I think, in city government has been more lawyers and publicists as opposed to sort of these technicians. So um, the thrust has changed a bit there. Yeah. I, I'd just add that um, I think a lot of city officials value the, that sort of historic view, the statistical view of even their own departments. Uh, for example, you know, a deputy fire commissioner came to use the collection uh, in order to prove that they had the least number of fire deaths that year. And so they needed, you know, to go back to previous years, the statistics of you know, how many people in Chicago died from fires. Um, and so the, I feel like that function is still uh, valued, but the, the way that it's um, uh, done is a little bit differently. I would suggest first coming up to the fifth floor, which is where the collection is located, as well as where our reference desks are. Um, we'll most likely refer you to our online public access catalog. Um, and uh, one of the assets of the collection is that we did um, cataloging for the, the published materials in, in the collection. and. Um, we so you know if your subject is you know um, freight tunnels or if your subject is um, North Lawndale community area or you just need a map that shows this like the the dumps um, where former dumps were in Chicago you know you can um, a lot of that information can be gleaned from some of the the um, catalog records. The other thing, the other reason to start on the fifth floor is that the Municipal Reference Collection and Municipal Reference Library um, created specialized indexes to help people um, use the collection. For example, this periodicals index, we indexed a number of Chicago periodicals, many of them very obscure. Um, and some of them are actually from the, the newsletters of, you know, the health department or the police department. So, like, if you, I was asked, you know, when, when did the police department first buy a helicopter? You know, well, they, or their newsletter had some information about, you know, the, the new helicopter, you know, the, this new equipment or whatever. And so you can kind of look up things by um, using the, the specialized indexes. The other one we have is to maps you know that often you know I've definitely had questions like I need a map from 1979 and you know of, of the streets or I, I need something that only shows me the um, uh, uh, ethnic groups of Chicago or you know some other topical information and rail railways or you know something like that um, and so we can go to our, this map index, and not only does it have uh, index to our flat, flat maps, but maps that are with, bound within, say, annual reports or something. So like this one that we have from this uh, freight tunnel um, disaster, you know, we would be able to say, okay, on page 96 of that document, you know, uh, there's a map of the loop that shows elevations or, or you know, 
<laughs> oh, here's a great one. Um, this one shows, it's from a 1950s civil defense document. It shows the effect of a, what, five megaton and one megaton yeah. burst on Chicago. Yes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, all, all those sorts of, um, you know, based, potentially based on just the catalog record itself, you wouldn't know that the training and exercise manual from the Civil Defense Agency had um, a map of the, where, you know, Chicago would be destroyed if a bomb dropped on it, you know. Um, but given the added value indexes, we can pretty quickly like, give, give you that information. Um, usually there are only one or two indexes per subject. Um, for example, if somebody was looking for Nike missile sites, I guess we're on this civil defense <laughs> bling, but um, we might look in the clip file index to find clipping files. Um, you can find one or two things in the catalog about that subject. Um, the periodicals index, I think we know from experience, okay. doesn't have anything about right. them. Um, another feature, though, of, um, so all in all, we have about eight or ten of these specialized indexes. But I think one topic we might get to a little later is many, many of our publications are in series, um, like that truck back there. Yeah. Um, it, show, it the council journal, we have about 160 years with it, the indexes. We know how to use some cumulative type indexes in municipal code, for example, often serves as a cumulative index to the council journal. So those sorts of things, um, a lot of it consists of, if you look for the council journal in the catalog, you'll get an entry which says something like Chicago City Council Journal. You don't know that it has a history of the railroads, a history of the freight tunnels, uh, health histories. Resolutions about this restaurant that's been in the neighborhood for a long time and, you know, the aldermen wanted to honor it and officially. You know, and so you know it's people, places, and and all sorts of things. Or, or like the second shelf over mm -hmm. there is the Department of Public Works annual reports. They're not indexed, but we know. Well, if you want to find, well, we had a gentleman in looking for street paving, for example. Oh yeah. And very fascinating subject that not many people look at, and. Um, we knew, well, this is more using us as indexes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But we knew that if you look through the um, Public Works Annual Reports, you'll get a list of each street paved each year and how it was paved and what it was paved with and all that. There's one excellent book from 1959 called... Um, Governments of Chicago. <laughs> Governments of Chicago. Um, yeah. And it has basically a history of each department function. For example, it's, if we want, we deal a lot with sort of original sources, which for a government organization is often a law or a code or an ordinance. But if you want to figure out how the Chicago Housing Authority started out, that's not easy. It's a very obscure state law. Yeah. Um, but if you go to the government of Chicago, it's right yeah. there. It tells I, you what it is. I was going to use the example of the Chicago Public Library and how it is, you know, and, and there's libraries can be library districts and they're funded through that way or they are part of the city government. And if you go to the governments of Chicago, you can kind of see how the government of, you know, uh, both the, the taxing aspect of it as well as, you know, the, the organization and kind of who it reports to or doesn't report to um, can be, you know, learned from that. One of the ways to figure out 
what the um, the background of a city agency is, or how how an agency started, or um, when it started, is to look at the um, the municipal budget, uh, and you know. So you might see authorization in the city council journal creating a, um, a, a department or an office or a program to do something, and then you would go to the budget to see you know, when, what kind of money were they appropriated and what sort of, um, uh, when they started. We have previous years, so, this, so you can look at you know, current, how much money they're getting from the, the city, as well as you can go back year by year by year to see when they first started getting money or you know, the a big jump in the money that they're getting. Um, also, the budget often, it tells how many employees and often gives job titles. So it often acts as um, a table of organization. Mm -hmm. It's fairly frequent for people coming in looking for jobs to, uh, for that to be a great resource because it tells them what, you know, they may be looking for a job that says they're um, assistant corporation counsel in charge of uh, fiddles or whatever. And it'll tell you, give you an idea of how many other people there are in that agency and who they report to. So some of the more obscure departments or questions that we've had um, regarding the organization of the departments was about the um, mayor's office of special events and when did that begin and um, while you know the the earliest that we could find of it was in the budget as opposed to some sort of ordinance or within the council proceedings so it kind of got the money first and then got organized, I guess. I, I actually wrote a history of the municipal reference library about a short one about five years ago and um, I looked at all the budgets throughout the last 116 years. Um, you know, it's useful to note that they started. Um, Frederick Rex got a junior stenographer in 1918 and he married her in 1942, I think. Um, <laughs> And then she was his chief assistant, and maybe I have had a suspicion she actually ran the place <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the next, um, well, like, yeah. uh, next 10, 15 years, yeah. so, yeah. till they both retired. So one of the first steps that I would recommend is to go to the Chicago Public Library's website um, to search the catalog, because the um, items in the municipal reference collection are in the catalog. So if you do keyword searching in um, the, the online catalog, you'll find um, what you want to look at when you come in. And so you come into Harold Washington Library, you go to the fifth floor to the reference desk. Our collection, for the most part, is in closed stacks. That means that you need to interact with a staff member to get the items that you've found when you did your search. So um, if you're looking for um, the uh, Iroquois Theater Fire and you want to know um, when, uh, and you, you found you know, that there's, there's a book that was written about it and then there were a couple of documents about the, the coroner's report and what was the other? The, 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 the investigation. Um, so you would come up and you would give us the call number that you found um, and we would pull it from the back and you would come out and you would see something like this that's... that's this is a transcript of the testimony of before the coroner, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, it's actually before the, the city, city council. council committee on buildings. Um, and lots and lots of people testifying as to what went up in fire and why it went why people were crushed to death when they jumped. Yeah. The, well, everybody yeah. loves a good disaster. Yeah. 
So yeah. I'll go grab some of our disaster yeah. ones and yeah. start handing them to Sarah. Yeah, so the Uruguay Theater Fire of 1903, um, that, well, December of 1903. And then um, the uh, epidemic of, oh no, the next would be the Eastland disaster when the boat tipped over in the Chicago River and killed all those people. And then um, influenza, which happened, you know, there was an um, uh, epidemic of influenza in 1918, 1919. Um, and then even more recently, um, we have some information about uh, wooden back porches. So there was a the back porch collapse in Lincoln Park in 2003. And we have some uh, documents about repairs and maintenance of the back porches. Um, from the Department of Buildings um, prior to that. And we brought this one along because when we were at Municipal Reference Library, it was the number one interlibrary loan item. Um, it's a eugenic sterilization in the United States. A report of the Psychopathic Laboratory of the Municipal Reference Court, or I'm sorry, of the Municipal Court of Chicago. Um, American scientists were in the forefront of the eugenics movement in the 20s, and um, so, and this was apparently a key document in that. So, other major topics that we that you would come to use our collection for um, would be uh, the reversal of the Chicago River, um, the. Uh, Let's see, history of the, uh, well, I guess the, the, you can, the history of the parks. Um, we have things like the historical register of the park. Um, some history of, uh, of well, I'm not gonna say the history of built, urban planning though would be one of the, the big ones. So if you want to know about um, when certain redevelopments happened when they cleared blighted areas and then built up high rises or um, if you're interested in, in gentrification that sort of thing we would have materials on that um, we would have uh, both transportation related ones so expressways are very popular um, there's a, there's a lot of areas of life that Government is a primary actor in. Um, public health would be one. Uh, transportation facilities, I guess you would have mm -hmm. to say. Mm -hmm. um, planning. Crime. Yeah. Um, and uh, recreation, I, I guess, would I, be another one. I guess I would say that another sort of unexpectedly popular topic are programs that never happened. This is a document from the uh, 2016 Olympics. We also have shelves of documents on the 1993 World's Fair. And one perennial favorite is the Crosstown Expressway. We, mm -hmm. we get more questions about the Crosstown Expressway probably than the Dan Ryan, wouldn't you say? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which is our most popular expressway to get asked about. Yeah. Yeah. So we did bring up the Chicago Police Bulletins. So these were um, daily publications from the police department that had um, crimes people wanted and um, uh, missing persons uh, and other kinds of reports, es escapees. <laughs> um, and so you can go back and look at these um, daily bulletins. For example, the ones that we brought out were from about World War I, and you can see sort of the um, anti-German. They would have enemy aliens wanted. Yeah. Somebody didn't register in New York, and so they would have a national-wide bulletin for this missing German. Yeah. Which, since half the population of Chicago is German, was sort of ironic. But <laughs> um, and so uh, the other kinds of things that we have from the, the police department would be 
annual reports that they published. Um, often those are where you can find the statistics. Um, there's um, all sorts of data that actually comes out of the police department that can be analyzed in different ways. We also brought up um, uh, the daily crime statistics and you know those have been um, uh, gone through data analysis where people find, you know, the phases of the moon, um, you know, associated this, this with. the number of crimes for each day. Yeah. We have about 30 years of them. Uh, these computer pronouns. So. Yeah. Um, and I mean, now, now you get them from data.cityofchicago.org um, and you can get about 10 years worth of the uh, similar crime kind of statistics. So we, we grabbed something from the, the 1940s about, uh, 1948 through 1954, about police brutality from the John Howard Association about lockups in Chicago or secret detention by Chicago police. So, you know, these are, um, this one is a report of the civil, um, the ACLU. Um, and so, yeah, researchers can come in and use these collections and find out kind of historically what has happened and what had been done to, to change that. Here's a, here's a jail cell circa 1952. Um, so, and this is from something called the John Howard Association, which is still in existence. They investigate lockups. Ah. I'd, I'd promised something for um, Held Without Bail from 1947. So, yeah. Yeah. as I said, this is a topic that comes and goes. Mm -hmm. I love vital statistics, which is mostly, mostly deaths and death states. And we, I've looked at a lot of the 19th century annual reports and statistics and there are some fairly amazing facts in there that I think modern people don't realize. Um, at one time I calculated that a child only had a three-quarter chance of reaching the age five without dying in Chicago. Um, half of all people died from germs now it's um, elderly people now get pneumonia, but it's really, I think, a seventh or eighth cause. Um, so in general, I think the vital statistics are underused. The, the Land Clearance Commission and the urban renewal uh, materials, I think, are particularly interesting. Um, especially since you don't really know kind of the the built environment of Chicago has changed so much and often even though you don't think that there had been anything built somewhere in fact there there were things there and it, they, they've just been cleared out and so it's actually kind of interesting to um, use the land clearance documents to find out um, that yeah, there were streets and water pipes and sewers and utility um, uh, utilities underneath the, these areas that just look like flat land. Some of the innovative ways um, that people have used this collection have been with um, in doing their research for dissertations, and we ha help people research these um, and have um, uh, worked with them sometimes over many years on their projects. Uh, one of the... Uh, I, I'll, I'll say that one of the reasons why we think this is answering that question is because a lot of times these researchers come in, they dig things out of our collection that we have no idea is there, and I, th I think the first example Sarah has is a great example of that. Yeah, so this is um, a researcher from Japan on the historical development of the Chicago Public Day School for the Deaf. So 
um, this was not even a, a, um, a public, public institution. institution through like the, the Board of Education, but um, she spent, I don't know, 10 years researching our materials. For um, 10 years. <laughs> yeah, uh, for her, her dissertation. Um, one of the other uh, kind of interesting researchers was um, about Chicago's milk regulations and Chicago's milk supply and um, where Chicago got its milk before, um, I guess, refrig refrigeration was really popular. And um, let's see. The it, it turns out the reason Wisconsin is famous for cheese is because the farmers would sell fresh milk at a great price when milk was scarce in Chicago, and the rest of the year they would make cheese. So. <laughs> um, other researchers have spent a lot of time looking at our collections about uh, the Chicago Housing Authority, and um, in creating their uh, dissertations, uh, have come again and again for uh, our statistical materials as well as um, other. Uh, documents in the collection. So we worked with uh, uh, Brad Hunt. He published his dissertation on um, uh, the Chicago Housing Authority between uh, it's sort of its earliest point to um, the 1970s, I think. And no, then... Just to the 90s, I think. Oh, yeah. maybe the 90s. And then um, continued to uh, turn that into a book, Blueprint for a Disaster. Um, the other, other kinds of ways that people have used the collection include both um, the research and, again, more deaths and disasters, so the uh, Memorial Day Massacre. So this is one of the reasons why it might be good to come in and, and talk to one of the reference librarians when you're trying to do research within our collection is because sometimes things were called one thing at the time and then now we refer to it as something else. So, you know, this book is called The Steel Strike of 1937, but a lot of the History Fair students might come in and ask for the Memorial Day Massacre, um, which was, you know, when the police uh, broke up a picnic that was down in the south, south side. So, um, other what, what other things have changed names? Um. Oh, things like the you know like Pilsen. You know, you might actually want to be using keywords like Lower West Side, which is the community area, um, because a lot of the collection might have kind of that broader name as opposed to the most specific name. Oh, well, in the classic community area is probably Uptown um, split off Edgewater because Uptown was no longer considered uh, genteel. Yeah. So, you know, another area that, that people have researched and that we didn't even know that, they, that we had very that much, much on, on. <laughs> was um, the Nickelodeons. So this one is the getting a deeper hold in the life of the city and it's about Chicago Nickelodeons from 1905 to 1914. So, I mean, you're, we're talking about things that are over 100 years. And so, um, more recently, um, we have a researcher who worked on the honorary street names. So these are what have replaced actually changing the street name, um, but in, in order to honor people who, uh, the, the city council felt deserved a street named after them. Um, so, you know, the... Often the city council yeah. doesn't explain why they're honoring yes. this person, so... <laughs> yes, yeah. She did a good job, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, so, uh, when abortion was a crime was another dissertation that... that uh, Turned into a book as well. Yes, and it's the legal and medical regulation of abortion in Chicago, 1880 to 1973. And um, in addition to using the documents, you find out all sorts of um, kind of 
undercurrents the, uh, uh, about the, well, the one history. One interesting undercurrent in there was abortion was apparently initially criminalized because midwives did it. And doctors who tended to be males were jealous of both the abortion trade and the birthing trade. So, um, so it was easy to criminalize. The Chicago River, uh, a natural and unnatural history. Again, this is a, one of those topics that we would have a lot of resources on um, because it is both a, <laughs> a very man-made kind of um, engineered waterway. Uh, the, the researcher Libby Hill um, f found that even before the river actually reversed in 1900, which is kind of the big date that people know about the river flowing backwards or whatever, that um, prior to that, there were um, efforts to, to engineer the river to pump water into the Illinois and Michigan Canal some 40 or 50 years prior to that, um, again, in order to uh, flush out or clean out the, the water in the, the, the river. Um, homicide in Chicago is a, another really big topic, and um, so this researcher uh, who was looking at homicide in Chicago, 1875 to 1920, um, found that while it may have seemed like uh, Chicago had a, a, a very gangland problem, you know, mobsters um, committing these uh, homicides, that it was more likely to be um, kind of bar fights that, that ended up in these homicides as opposed to, you know, organized crime. And he was interesting too because he, he told us that there's a total, grand total of about five homicide, academic homicide researchers in the U.S. And if you think of how many billions of dollars the U.S. spends on its courts and um, everything else, that's kind of an amazing <laughs> lack of information. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then um, the history of building in Chicago. So we had pulled this, this uh, book out when we were just looking around today at, at, the, the, buildings. at the buildings that you can see directly from um, Harold Washington Library Center. And uh, Frank Randall, who wrote the, the first one, um, I didn't even know um, anyway. uh, he, he basically did a bibliography of buildings. So in addition to figuring out who the architect was and when it was built, and you could also find, you know, were the drawings published in a trade journal? Were there photos in this, uh, you know, other periodical? Were, um, uh, was it mentioned in a, a landmark? Um, registry, that sort of thing. And uh, so he wrote the, the original history of buildings in Chicago in what? The 1949. 1949. And um, obviously after that, a lot of buildings were built and a lot of change had been happened to the built environment. And so uh, his son uh, came into the municipal reference collection to do research to do a revised edition, an updated His edition. His son was about 80 by then. Yeah. <laughs> and the son said that, you know, his father left a couple boxes of these books and they were going for about $400 each. So whenever they needed a little money, they just run down to the basement and put one on the used book market. <laughs> but I guess they must have run out because yeah. he did That's, a new edition. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so. And another fun thing yeah. in this one, which we just discovered as yes. we opened it, yeah. is Frederick Rex would put uh, newspaper clippings in things. And he wouldn't put them in every copy, so that's why we didn't know this was here. Yeah. But this was the start of the clipping file. Yeah. Also, I had two more for your previous question. Um, one of the Two of my more fun experiences, they were actually both Germans. Um, 
One was a East German lady who came in, she had apparently grown up in the East German apartment blocks, had a pleasant childhood, and was out to prove, I think she was an academic, that um, CHA-type buildings were not so bad. You know, they have a worldwide bad reputation. Um, I lived in Tokyo, and they're known for people jumping off of them there. Uh, but her mission was to prove they weren't that bad. Another East German, re or another German researcher was very interesting because she came in, she wanted academic work on sewers, which I mean is a bit of a stretch. There's some academic work on sewers, but it's not something people write about every day. Um, and then, so we pulled out the two or three things we have. Maybe somebody writes a book or a thesis every 25 years. And then she indignantly said, anything published before 1980 is totally wrong. <laughs> and, you know, our sewers are pretty old. So uh, ultimately, I don't think we were able to help her. But <laughs> Yeah. I, I really liked helping this. Uh, well, I don't know if it's bad for privacy. I, I, helped, I liked helping an engineer who was um, looking for why there was water coming out um, uh, of, of this uh, train area that he was working on. He was not sure where the, the water was coming from. And we were able to, to find that, that it was um, uh, where the river had been straight. Yes. Yeah. So um, a lot of <laughs> a lot of Chicago has been um, filled in in various ways, and you know if you are trying to to build on an area that was previously river or lake <laughs> or even quarry, because that I I used to. Uh, lived near a park that was a quarry, and so the, it had been filled in basically with garbage, and um, so uh, that's why there's no buildings on top of that park, particular area of the park. So there's a lot of engineers come in with interesting questions. When they were building the United Center, Chicago's bigger than water mains or water tunnels, they're drilled through the limestone about 300 feet deep. So when they were building the United Center, we had an engineer coming in trying to locate the water tunnel, so that, which is a century old, century and a half old. Um, make sure they didn't punch through it. Um, when they did punch through and flooded the freight tunnels, we had all sorts of people coming in. Um, I wouldn't describe it as really interesting, but one sort of different use was when they were building Millennium Park. Millennium, the Chicago Park District, the city of Chicago, Metra, the state of Illinois, so at least one more agency involved, are all involved um, there. So we had the lawyers coming in for 10 years from these five different agencies, yeah. <laughs> trying to research that. Yeah, I mean, some of the, the more interesting anecdotes are like, um, why do we have to shovel our sidewalks when it snows? And when, when did that first become a law? You know, was there something bad that happened? And that's why the sidewalks need to be shoveled. So we kind of researched way, way, way back, and it was like 1850s. So, you know, you can think of a very small city of Chicago where that was still, you know, an issue. So one of my favorite documents, or type of document that's in our collection are maps, particularly color, maps that are in color. Um, showing various things, and so this collection from um, that was done, I believe, in the 1970s from the Department of Planning. It's called Historic City, and it has these wonderful maps. Um, 
of the community settlement panel patterns. So where uh, people of different ancestries settled in the city of Chicago. Um, and so you can see, yes, there was traditionally an, an Irish neighborhood here or a Polish neighborhood there. And um, it, it's uh, a very interesting and then also colorful resource. Um, so that's, that's one of my favorites. I, I like the, um, the Centennial List. So this was done by um, Frederick Rex. It was done, it's called the Centennial List because it was um, done at Chicago Centennial, which is 1837 um, for the, being the, the city of Chicago. And um, he, how he compiled it was both uh, basically hand-drawn um, pictures of the, the wards as they changed from 1837 to 1937, um, as well as alphabetical lists of the elected officials and when they were in office and what, you know, if they were aldermen, what ward they were aldermen for. And so um, it, it's just sort of a fascinating resource that you just don't see, you know, being done in, in this way anymore. Um, I think the City Manual of Chicago is another one of my favorites because a lot of it has to do with um, stories that, you know, you didn't even know that they, they were researched in that way. So the municipal device, which is the Y symbol, um, the, the history of the Y symbol was um, researched and published in one of the city manuals and those are about 100 years old too. Um. I was about to say I don't really have a favorite. I don't really um, do. But then I do. So this is my favorite. <laughs> um, it's called Open Air Crusaders. It has this picture of a young child um, bundled up. Very bundled. Per pretty bundled. Yeah. That was actually her classroom. Yeah. And there's snow around. And you there's know. snow around. Um, the idea was that for tubercular and other patients who suffered from impure air, that if you put them in pure air, it would cut, it would cure their, cure whatever was wrong with them. So they had um, these open air schools that were basically outside all winter. Um, and we actually had a generation that, who would come in researching these because they went to them. I don't think they discontinued them until probably the 60s. So yeah. this is kind of my favorite for the picture. Yeah. Then, you know, a lot of things are my favorites, but I would say maybe public works annual reports. I had already mentioned they have all these fascinating drawings and all. I'd mentioned the health reports previously is something I really liked, but um, yeah. anyway, it's all neat stuff. Yeah. So speaking of researchers um, looking for kind of evidence of their own pasts, um, the uh, materials that we have from the Board of Education or the Chicago Public Schools are often used. So we have, um, and these are kind of cute little directories, and they have. Um, the the names of the, the schools as well as you know um, other other facts about the schools so the elementary schools um, you know when they were built uh, uh, when additions were made how many pupils they can have who the principal was you know um, I think there may even be teachers names in here uh, or you know when the school year ran you know uh, when the term ended, I guess. Uh, one of the other places in the city that I would um, refer people to, or who, you know, you might use our collection and their collection as well, um, for specific questions, it would, um, it would vary. So, you know, the question about why do we need to, to shovel our sidewalks, when did that first become law, 
you know, you might also work with the collection at the Cook County Public Law Library. You might also work with the, um, the City Council Proceedings collection that's at the Northeastern Illinois University. Especially when we've traced it back to the 19, or 1850s. Yeah, yeah, which is pre-fire, so you want to, to go to, to the collections at um, the uh, Illinois Regional Archives there. Um, so if somebody is interested in uh, what a specific neighborhood looked like or um, potentially s specific buildings. Sometimes I would refer them also to the Chicago History Museum because they have a um, photo uh, archive. Um, the, if they're more interested in uh, genealogy, um, we aren't necessarily the, the best collection to go for, go to if you're interested in um, a specific ancestor. I mean, even if they were, say, in the police department, you know, what we would have in our collection might only come up if they were particularly good or particularly bad. So if they, you know, were honored in some way, you know, they might have ended up in newspapers. Um, or if they were, you know, uh, corrupt, you know, then they would also end up in the, the newspaper in some way. And so you would maybe find um, information about them that way. Um, but if you're really interested in somebody, then, you know, some of the other genealogical collections in the city, like at the Newberry Library, um, might be uh, where you would turn to. I I, w I would say that um, the collections that sort of most closely overlap or complement ours are, number one, the regional archives, because as I said, we have the published materials, they have the unpublished materials. Um, it's, you know, people are interested in things, you have the homicide index, for example, um, um, coroner's inquest r records, um, the city council archives, which as you had mentioned are barely touched um, in terms of access. Um, and, you know, hopefully we often tell people, you know, you're looking for this report, it, the published journal says it's published, not published, so it's placed on file which means, yeah, it's on file, it's at the regional archives. Um, or if they're researching other departments um, of the city and want to get beyond the published material. Um, our collections actually overlap most closely probably with the History Museum and the old Chicago or Illinois Historical Library in Springfield, with now the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library. Um, and we also do a lot of referring to other units of the Chicago public. One which overlaps with this very closely because it's the city is a creature of the state is our, sta own, our own state collection, which mm -hmm. is more or less co-located with this. Um, so we use a lot of state documents. Um, people sometimes have more federal questions. We refer them to the National Archives. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I don't know, what else? Well, Newberry for genealogy. So within, within the, um, the Chicago Public Library, there are two, a couple of other special collections that kind of um, can be used in tandem with our own. We're sitting so, in one. We, yes, so the special <laughs> collections here at Harold Washington Library um, uh, have archives of two mayors. So the uh, Harold Washington administration's archives, Harold Washington's archives, as well as Eugene Sawyer's are here. Um, and so the archival materials from the mayor are going to be different than what we have in the um, published collections. So, you know, we have their executive orders, um, but it's um, going to be organized differently and it's going to be sort of the the um, kind of collected or published 
versions of things as opposed to um, press photos uh, of the mayor doing some sort of signing of something, um, which would be in, uh, in the archive collection. Yeah, the archives will have much more personal and biographical material than we will. Ours tends to be mostly the mayor in an official function. So one of the questions that we often get um, has to do with um, the, I guess, archives of either a department or archives of a specific person who might have been in charge of that department or um, another kind of elected official. And uh, unfortunately, one of the answers is that the municipal reference collection, while it is um, full of great resources when you're researching departments um, or uh, mayors or aldermen, something like that, we would only have their, their published materials. We're not an archive of, of materials. So um, if you're interested in, say, um, Mayor Richard J. Daley, his papers are not within the municipal reference collection. Um, they're deposited through agreements that the family has with institutions to care for them. So um, in that particular case, they're housed at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Um, however, depending on the trajectory of somebody's life, they may have um, deposited their papers or collections somewhere completely different outside of Chicago. Um, so, you know, if, if the alderman moved to uh, California after his service here, you know, you may need to go to institutions in California to, to find their papers. And so, um, using an, an world... An yeah. example would be Alderman yeah. Throop of the 19th century who mm -hmm. went off to Pomona and um, started the California, what's now Caltech, and uh, mm -hmm. deposited his papers there. Yeah. So, you know, using online resources like the WorldCat as well as Archives Grid would be two ways to then search, given the, the name of somebody who you're interested in researching. Um, would, you could search to see, oh yeah, University of Illinois at Chicago has this, or uh, Northwestern has that. I, I would say with the departmental archives too, one important consideration is that until the Illinois Local Records Act was passed. Do you know what year that was? 80s. Yeah, 80 or 70s, somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, departments were under no obligation to retain their records. And often the departments people are most interested in, like police or health, um, the best answer we can give them is they're not under any obligation to keep it. Um, if they do keep it, it's probably in a warehouse somewhere that nobody knows about. Um, when people discovered, for example, the CHA has warehouse upon warehouses of records, um, the police department probably goes through a warehouse a year of records. And now they're required to keep some, but not all of them. Um, even the court archives threw away nine-tenths of all of their um, cases. Mm -hmm. They kept a 10% sample. So, you know, if you're a... Tr and then many of the more famous cases were stolen. So um, mm -hmm. if you're trying to look up bootlegging, which people were, um, mm -hmm. or often do, um, it's hard to do through the circuit court archives. 